Hey there, 3D printing people. Paul here, and I'm doing a companion video to my previous video on the Octoprint deploy script for Octopi. What I'm going to be doing here is doing a basic Linux distribution to show you how this works for any of the Linux distributions that are currently supported by the script. So this is uh, any of the Ubuntu's, Fedora, Debian, um, the uh, Raspberry Pi OS, all of those things, Diet Pi, Arm being all of those things should uh, apply to this. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal. And before we do anything else, and I should point out that if you follow the instructions on the GitHub README, this is exactly what it'll have you do. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to do uh, sudo apt install git. And then you want to put in your password here. I'm not sure I got it right. That is step number one. This shouldn't take too long. I'm using a, a virtual machine here, so there's I have a few limitations uh, with what I'm doing, but the installation process should be exactly the same. All right, so now we're going to do a git clone command. Uh, and so this is git clone uh, github.com. Poxtelis octoprint deploy.git. All right. Now, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start the script. And what this will do is this will actually install octoprint for us. So you do not need to install octoprint using any wiki instructions or using snap or anything like that. This is actually going to do this all for us. So sudo octoprint deploy octoprint deploy.sh. And what we're going to do is we're going to first prepare the system. So press one here. We are using, in this case, Ubuntu 22. So we'll select that option two. And then it'll ask us if we're ready to begin. Yes. So this is going to, as it tells you, this is going to create an Octubuntu based installation. It's going to download and install all the packages that we need. It's going to install Octoprint. And then it's also going to ask us which streamer that we want to install. This will take just a little bit of time here, but I'm just gonna, I'm going to do it in real time. I'm not really even going to bother to edit this video. So now it's just still installing packages that it needs. Uh, one of the things I'd also point out is that the newest Ubuntu versions um, automatically install Braille TTY, BRL TTY, which interferes with serial devices. So the script will actually remove that automatically as well. All right, maybe I will edit this video to speed things up. All right, now it's going to install Octoprint. So all of it's it's downloading all the necessary Python stuff to install Octoprint. All right, and now here is where we're going to choose which streamer we're going to use. Um, traditionally, MJPEG streamer has been used for all Octoprint distributions, but more recently, 
Ustreamer, or more properly called MicroStreamer, uh, has been coming to increasing prominence. So we're going to use MicroStreamer. So I'll put two and enter there. All right, and you can see now what it's done. It's started a generic service on port 5000 and it's created a, a, a service for this. So the next thing that we're gonna do is open up a web browser. And again, this is where the, the virtual machine makes things take longer than it really normally should. And we're going to connect to localhost 5000. Uh, hadn't seen that before. All right, apparently in the new Firefox, you have to put all that information in. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the setup wizard. And what this does is this is going to make our template instance. So if we're gonna be installing more than one printer on this computer, this template will be used for all of them. So we're not gonna do any backup or restoring. We need to have a user. Create our account. Might as well save it. We'll enable connectivity check. Enable anonymous usage tracking. Uh, and we could change things here if we wanted to with the default printer, but I'm not going to at this point. Uh, one of the things I'll point out here is that if we if we look at, for example, some of the server commands, they'll have some of these things like instance that are described here. These are all things, as well as the title bar here. These are all gonna get replaced later on. Uh, we're gonna leave all of this stuff blank. The script will handle this for us if we were gonna do cameras. I'm not gonna show you cameras in this video. All right, so now we have that done and we have our generic template instance, which has been created right here. Okay, now our next step is that we're gonna go back to the terminal window here, and we are going to start a new instance. So we press one. We are on Linux slash Octobuntu in this case, so two. We'll just call this printer one. We're just gonna give it all defaults here because the script knows where things have been installed. So this is all going to be enter, and then it's gonna to ask to begin the auto detect. So I'm gonna press yes here. It says to plug in the printer. And one of the things that I have to do is I actually have to allow that in. All right, and it detected our serial number. Now, if your printer does not have the serial number and Ender 3s do not have serial numbers, simply wait and it will detect which USB port uh, the printer was plugged into. And the only catch is that your printer must stay plugged into that same USB port for the UDEV entries to work correctly. I'm not going to do a camera right now, so I'm gonna hit no here. And it says, are we ready to write all the changes? Yes. And so it says, it tells you everything that's been done here. Now, if we had more printers to connect, and actually, why don't I just do another one now anyway? Uh, we'll call it printer two. All defaults here. You'll notice the selected port is 5002. Our first one was on 5001. This is on 5002 now. All right, so we'll hit yes here. I grabbing another printer board with a different serial number, plugging it in. And its serial number has been detected now. No to the cameras, write all the changes. And let's just quit for now. We've done two instances. 
Now we can connect to localhost 5001. And here we'll use our admin user that we set up previously. You can log in here. And one of the things, I, I've unplugged that printer, but it will show up here in your serial port as dev octo and then your instance name. I'll go to, to uh, the second instance that I hooked up since this printer is still plugged in. And you can see this here. So now we have dev octo printer two, and it will always be able to find the correct printer if either it detected it with the serial number, or if you detected it with the USB port and you left it plugged into the same spot. So we can save connections, auto connect, connect and if we look into our terminal here we see a printer connecting with a lot of bed leveling information available on it there it is and now you can make many octoprint instances very very quickly